Hello and welcome to the campus of Plainfield High School. My name is Lex Zorn and I'll be bringing you all the action as your Plainfield Quakers challenge the Greenwood Woodman in freshman football here on audiosportsonline.com. The, uh, the two varsity uh, teams from these schools played right here at Plainfield on Friday with the Quakers prevailing by a score of 63-27, breaking the game open after a tight first half. Uh, Plainfield... And now we open with a uh, squib kick here. It is fielded, uh, and it goes through his legs. He goes out of bounds, so the Quakers will be taken over at about the 10, or 15, excuse me. But anyway, though, um, it was 21-13 in favor of Plainfield at the half before the Quakers had a barrage of uh, four touchdowns scored in a five-and-a-half minute span of the third quarter to put the game away, improving the Quakers' varsity team to 3-2 and two on the season. So now the uh, now we get a look at the future of the program with the freshmen. So now they line up uh, two receivers, and now we've got a. Uh, okay, they're they're trying to get uh, an extra football off the field here. So the Quakers open first and ten at the fifteen. Two receivers to the right, one to the left, one running back, and he gets it, and he's brought down immediately for a loss. So they were right on top of him. Let's see who was that there on the carry. That was uh, that was number 81 for uh, Plainfield. That's uh, Jaden Lynch. He is a five. T he's five two one ten. I almost said five two freshman, but I forgot everybody's a freshman in this game. So old habits die hard. The thing is, you know, in varsity you're accustomed to mentioning the class of the player. But now uh, he gets it again. This time he does a little better. Spins around um, and plows his way forward for maybe a couple of yards. So it'll, bring, it'll still be third and long, though, for the Quakers. The game on Friday, by the way, was Green, Greenwood's first loss of the season. So now, three receivers to the left, one to the right. Quarterback and shotgun. He uh, looks to pass, then dodges. And now he uh, throws down the right sideline. And he's got uh, almost a completion there. The uh, receiver had his hands on it and just dropped it, so... Looks like it'll be three and out to start the game off for the Quakers. So now um, Greenwood uh, trying to keep this one from getting away. They, they actually led for about half of the first half on Friday. Then Plainfield took the lead for good in the second quarter, although it was a one-possession game until uh, Plainfield's first possession of the third quarter when the collapse began for the uh, Woodman. So now... Punt, the, um, it's uh, going to be a, a fair catch called for. And so Greenwood takes it there in uh, Plainfield territory. And the Woodmen will start their first possession of the game in excellent field position. 7.52 here to go in the first quarter. The varsity game on Friday, Plainfield went... Um, Plainfield went... Um, Three and out on the first possession, but, you know, moved the ball very well for most of the game after that. And ironically, Greenwood started off uh, moving the ball very well on their first two drives, both which produced touchdowns, and they really struggled the rest of the way after the uh, playing, field, uh, playing field defense hit a stride. So now uh, rush up the middle, and he's he, with forward progress might have gotten to the line of scrimmage. So let's see. That was... Could, I thought it said number 28, and I'm not showing a number. Yeah, there's a, there's not a number 28 on my roster for Greenwood. That's part of the charm, the annoying charm of high school ball is you, you get a lot of number changes so that you know are not updated uh, in quick time on the rosters. So now 7.05 to go, second and 10 for the Woodman. Now the quarterback, a uh, screen pass, and it is uh, caught for a gain of about four or five there, and he... Uh, Wow, showing a lot of toughness. He held on for uh, a good four or maybe five seconds after a receiver had a hand on his ankle. But So it's showing a lot of toughness there. And at number 13 for the Woodman, he was also not showing on the roster. So <laughs> I apologize if I have to identify these uh, kids by number only, but uh, I will do the best I can. So now a third and six for the Woodman. They play nine-minute quarters here in freshman ball. Two receivers to the right, uh, eye formation. Now number 28 gets it. He breaks through, and he does have the first. 
So the Woodmen move the chains here in the first quarter at Plainfield. And, you know, I, when I um, first got here, I didn't see any, any uh, Greenwood players, so I was afraid that they were, you know, they had um, a trouble similar to what the JV team had last year in, in the matchup here between these two schools, which I'll, I talked about in the varsity game on Friday, and I'll, I'll mention it a little later. So now two receivers to the left eye formation. Hand off to 28, and he's got a hole up the middle. He's got a first down and more inside the 20 down to the 16. So uh, six. Uh, now the clock stops with an even six minutes to go here in the uh, in the first quarter. Still no score. Plainfield was three and out on the first possession. So the Woodmen lining up now with two receivers to the left with uh, twenty-eight and five uh, lined up to, to the left. Now. Uh, Pitch back to 28, and he's uh, brought down for a loss. He didn't have a lot of speed. He went over far to the left, and uh, there were two Quakers right on top of him. So that'll uh, it's a good break for the Quakers' defense. And one thing, you know, about these some of these games, even some varsity games, but especially when you get down to the freshman games, very often there's not a kicker who's you know reliable to do much you know beyond extra points. So. Even you know if you stop you know a team like around the 15 or so, they'll often go for it on fourth. So it, it really helps your defense a lot. So now quarterback screen pass and it's complete on the right side and he takes it all the way into the end zone for the touchdown. So the Woodman opened the scoring with 5:05 to go here in the first quarter on a pass from Luke Hommel to number 13, <laughs> and I am sorry that. I do not know number 13's name, but they uh, have apparently made a lot of uh, number switches here for the Woodman. Of course, that doesn't necessarily mean... And now uh, they are going for the two-point conversion with one receiver to each side now. Hommel with the eye formation. Hands off to number 41, and he's brought down so the conversion will fail. He handed it to Nick Schaefer. So, after a failed two-point conversion, your score here at Plainfield, your Quakers trailing the Woodmen 6-0. And interestingly, uh, in the game on Friday night, the Quakers started off, uh, they uh, went three and out in their first possession, then Greenwood scored a touchdown and had a failed conversion on their first possession. So, you know, maybe history will repeat itself and the Quakers will end up rolling to a big victory. We shall see. So two players back deep to receive for the Quakers. Kicking off for the Woodman, we have number 61, Landwood, Landon Wood. He's 5'7", he's 175. They have two, um, two um, Quakers back deep to receive. One of them is Keegan Scheffler. I cannot tell who the other one is from my vantage point. So now another squib kick, and now it's fielded uh, at about the 32, right over to the left side. So a nice return there. That was number 47 on the return for the Quakers, Nate Torres. He's 5'9", 160, so the Quakers take over for their second offensive possession with 5.02 here to go in the first quarter, trailing 6-0 here at Plainfield. Yeah, the Quakers um, now pass the ha well, Quakers varsity team passed the halfway mark of the regular season. Now they've completed five of nine games, a three and two record. They've won the three games they were supposed to win. So now three receivers to the right, hand off there, and he takes it over to the left. But he's uh, I uh, might have gotten a forward progress for one yard, and that would be it. That was Xavier Ridgeway there for the Quakers. So now um, playing quarterback for the uh, by the way for the Quakers uh, Aiden Moyers five nine one twenty five hands off now to um, to Michael Black who gets up for about three or four yards that'll bring up about third and six so we've uh, played a little over half a quarter here four twenty three to go and counting here in the uh, here in the quarter so third down and five now at the forty one. 
And now we got some movement on the line and a flag here. It's going to be offsides against the Woodman, so that will... Looks like it's going to bring the Quakers just shy of a first down. So three receivers to the right. Ridgeway, the running back. No, I'm sorry. Um, and now he gets us some room on the right, left side. We got a flag, though. And he's past the 30, past the 25, knocked out of bounds around the 20. That was Jacob Sheets. Jacob with a K. Now it's going to it's coming back though it's uh, holding against the Quakers. But yeah, you know, um when I think about Jacob with a K, I think about Jacob Dillon, um the lead singer of the Wallflowers. Of course that's Bob Dillon's son, but I wonder if that started a new craze of uh, parents naming their kids Jacob with a K. Personally, I would never name my kids a name that was pronounced like a common name but spelled differently cuz think about how many times your poor kid is going to have to correct the spelling of his or her name, you know, over the course of his or her life, you know. I just I just think it's counterproductive no matter how cute it might be. So now three receivers to the left. Um, Sheets the running back. Hand off to Sheets now. Takes it up the middle. And he gets about two or three, so it's going to bring up second and long for the Quakers with 3.48 to go and counting here in the first quarter. Play Quakers at their own um, at their own 49. So you got uh, one receiver to the left, two to the, uh, three to the right. And now a screen pass complete over the left side. He takes it past the 45, 40, 35. He's got the first down, 30, up to about the 28. So that was uh, Jack Beebe. B-E-E-B-E. -E -E. wonder if he's related to Don Beebe, the former Buffalo Bills great who's uh, best known for his heroic play in a losing effort in the Super Bowl that year when um, he knocked the ball out of Leon Lett's hands. Um, more on that later. But anyway, uh, handoff there to, uh, and now that was um, Ridgeway, Xavier Ridgeway, who gets up for about um, seven yards. So it'll bring up second. Uh, they, got, they, they didn't give him quite as good a spot as I thought, but it'll be about second and five, though. So um, now Ridgeway gets it again, and he dodges around a couple of defenders. He gets up. He's got the first down up to about the sixteen. So the Quakers uh, trying to answer. The clock stops to move the change with 2.50 to go here in the first quarter at Plainfield. So now, three receivers. We've got BB, um, Scheffler, and one other receiver to the left. Now the fakes the handoff, throws it up the middle. He's got a completion inside the 10 up to the 5. That was a BB there on the reception. So a first and goal for the Quakers. They're a touchdown and successful conversion away from taking the lead here. So now they've got uh, Ridgeway and I believe that's uh, Carter lined up to the right. Sheets is the running back. Now Druck snap to Sheets, and he takes it uh, himself up the middle. He's going to be very close to the end zone. Did he get in? Yes, touchdown. Jacob Sheets ties it. With a conversion pending, 2.15 to go in the first quarter. So the Quakers strike back on a five-yard rush by um, by Jacob Sheets. 5'9", 155. Harris uh, Nichols to attempt the extra point. Six feet, 160. There's a snap. The kick is up, and it is good, and the Quakers have the lead. So um, the Quakers uh, strike back after going down. They lead the uh, Greenwood Woodman by a score of 7-6 here on audiosportsonline.com. Well, it's been overall a pretty good year for Quakers football. They did have a couple of losses, but both to marquee teams, both teams that... You know, both you know, both the teams in which the uh, Quakers would have clearly been the underdogs against Avon. Um, as last week, I haven't seen this week's state rankings, but they were um, Avon was ranked number seven in Class Six A, 
And then Ron Colley, who's ranked number one in the Quakers class, which is Class 5A, and also a nine-time state champion. But And then, the, like I said, the Quakers won the three games they were supposed to. So now Nichols to kick off two um, receivers back deep for the Woodmen. What the Woodmen have done is squibs so far. But however, Nichols kicks deep, and it is fielded inside the 10. Now brought up to the 10, 15, 20, and they brought down just shy of the 25 there. So nice return there by 13 for the Woodmen. And again, I do not have 13's, na 13's name on my roster. So anyway, some of the uh, Woodmen I'll have to, for lack of a uh, an, uh, better alternative, refer to simply by their uniform number. 7-6 your score, playing field leading. So now we have 13 lined, uh, lining up to the left. Um, and then 23, who's also not on the roster to the right, along with an eye formation. Luke Hommel is the quarterback. Hands off to the uh, to the um, halfback, who's also not on the roster, number 28. And he uh, gets up about five or six up the middle. One forty-two to go here in the um, first quarter at Plainfield. This is uh, week five of the Indiana high school football season. So now we've got 83 lined up to the left. 13 to the right. I formation. Fakes the handoff now. Throws up the middle. However, there's uh, some uh, miscommunication on the route, and the pass is incomplete. So, and by the way, um, for the sake of clarification, whenever I refer to a player by his number, it's because uh, there's no player by that number uh, listed on the roster. So, anyway, third and four now for the Woodman. And now 13 heads over to the sidelines. Got two receivers to the left. I formation. Now a uh, handoff there. It's uh, only good for about one, so the uh, Quakers will Quakers will apparently get the ball back on a punt. Number twenty-eight there for the Woodman. So Caleb uh, Weigel back to receive for the. Quakers, 47 seconds to go here in the uh, first quarter. Quakers with a 7-6 lead. And now we've got a whistle here. Okay, we've got a flag here. Offsides against the playing field. So the five-yard penalty will result in a first down, so... Uh, Green, uh, Greenwood maintains possession after all with 42.1 seconds to go here in the first quarter. So 23 lined up to, to the left, 13 to the right. I formation. Hommel under center. Takes a snap. To sit to the halfback, 28, who takes it up for about three or four yards. Bring it up second down. So that'll bring about second and six for the Woodman. So now 13 to the right. 13 and 23 to the right. And now that will be the end of the quarter. So after one quarter of action here at Plainfield, your Quakers on top of the visiting Greenwood Woodman by a score of 7-6 here on audiosportsonline.com. You're listening to Plainfield Football, powered by audiosportsonline.com. This broadcast is brought to you by Wicker Construction, Ganell and Kinneman LLP, Jimmy John's, KG Enterprises, and Hoosier Tent and Party Rental. For more than two decades, Wicker Construction has engaged in building one-of-a-kind homes and remodeling projects while exceeding client expectations, delivering projects with professionalism and integrity. Wicker Construction works closely with you, the client, to understand your lifestyle and construction needs. 
Jimmy John's offers freaky fast delivery and are last-minute catering specialists. They're located at 2683, that's 2683 East Main Street, 2683 East Main Street next to BW3s, and open from 10.30 a.m. to 10 p.m. Sunday through Saturday. More information can be found at 837-8282, that's 837-8282, or online at jimmyjohns.com. That's jimmyjohns.com. Well, back here at Plainfield, we're about to start the second quarter with your Plainfield Quakers on top of the Greenwood Woodman by a score of 7-6 here on audiosportsonline.com. 6.20 is your time of day. The um, It's second and seven for the Woodman now. Each team scored a touchdown in the first quarter. However, um, Greenwood failed on the extra point, and that's the difference in the score here. So 28 takes the ball uh, up the middle for about two yards. 8.52 to go here in the second quarter. The lights are not on yet. Probably will be before we are um, out of here. So now... uh, Woodman line up. We've got number five to the left, number 83 to the right. Now, handoff to the fullback there. He gets up for about two or three yards, but he's going to be short of the first. Probably two or three short. That's number 33 for the Woodman. Eight, eight oh nine to go and counting here in the second quarter. So now the big question is, will the Woodmen go for it? Which is a lot more common um, in high school ball, and I think especially a lot more common in these freshman and JV games when you don't have so much to lose, when there's not as much to, to risk, you know. So now one receiver to each side, I formation. No, uh, now, no, excuse me, not both. Uh, uh, one running back to each side of the quarterback. So the, uh, now hand off, Morel hands off to, uh, and he uh, is going to be stopped for a gain of just about one. So the Quakers will take over on downs. That was number 28 there. I'm sorry, Mor- I just said Hommel. I, I, I said Morel, I meant to say Hommel. So 740 to go here in the second quarter at Plainfield. Your Quakers on top of the Woodman by a score of 7-6. So now the uh, Quakers line up, BB to the left, uh, Car- uh, uh, Carter Minette to the right, and, along with two other receivers. So now throw over to BB, makes the catch, dodges a tackle, and he gets up uh, possibly to the first down. It's going to be real close, uh, tackled over on the left side of the field. So he's he just uh, shy of the 30, and yes, they do move the chains here. So the clock stops with 7.24 to go. Now three receivers to the right. Um, one to the left. Ridgeway, the running back. Quarterback and shotgun hands it to Ridgeway. Takes it over to the left side, and he's tripped up and gets about two or three yards. And so, let's see. So, there, there's a... Uh, So we have a lightning delay here. I'll tell you, I thought I saw it out of my peripheral vision to my right. I was hoping I was wrong. I know that under IHSAA rules, um, it's um, under IHSAA rules. So once uh, lightning is spotted, you have to uh, the game has to be halted for at least half an hour and not resumed until um, 30 minutes after the last sight. So hopefully that will be the only sight of lightning we have. I've had mixed uh, mixed results with lightning delays over the years. The last one I had was with your Quakers varsity team at Franklin last year, when um, when um, we had a lightning delay after I believe just the first play from scrimmage. I know it was on the first possession at least, and that apparently was the only side of lightning. And the game was resumed after half an hour, and you know completed. The rest of the game went you know on fine, but then you know. Um, I've been to some, you know, I, I was at, I was at, hold on. And um, then uh, there was another one that involved the Quakers. It was uh, two years ago. Um, two years ago um, at Mooresville, uh, we had about a two, two and a half hour lightning delay. I don't, I don't, I think the game had started, um, 
And that, that was ended up finally after about two hours they resumed the game and it was finished about 11:30 at night. And I really believe that Plainfield won in part because of the lightning delay. Because my observation about lightning delays is that they're more harmful to the team that relies more on its passing offense. And that year, um, Mooresville had a superstar, a superstar senior quarterback named Alex Faber, who went on to play for Georgetown College, and he just um, he just wasn't the um, they just. I remember uh, the pioneers just were out of sync the rest of the game after that. And similarly, when I commentated um, Martinsville, I commentated Decatur Central at Martinsville on two consecutive days back in um, the 2012 season. And uh, it was nearly the first half was played on the first um, on the first day, and then the remainder of the game was resumed the the um, next afternoon. And uh, Martinsville, at the time, they were running the run-and-shoot offense under head coach Fred Cutruff. And when they came back Saturday, they were just so out of sync and they didn't get much going you know, offensively in the second half, and Decatur Central rolled to the win. And that was before Justin Dixon's uh, teams started to become total offensive juggernauts. So, um, of course, this game is not very passing-oriented, so I don't think this game, this lightning delay, will have much of an... Uh, Ed, much of a, um, I don't think it'll really do much um, either way to, to, to benefit one team or the other. So it's, uh, anyway, let me see. Uh, right now I'm, I'm looking at um, on my iPhone and I don't see any lightning in the forecast, which doesn't mean there won't be any, but yeah, there's no lightning scheduled in the forecast until 1 a.m. So we're supposed to, the sun's supposed to set at Wow, it's 7.48 tonight. Because when I commentated the game here, it was like, I think eight, it's come, the sunset was like 8.05 on um, Saturday, or Friday, excuse me. I'm surprised we're losing about 17 minutes in three days. Usually it's a, we use, lose about a minute and a half a day um, and then gain a minute and a half a day after um, December 21st or whenever it is when we have the shortest uh, daylight of the year. So uh, right now it says chance of rain 30%. Uh, it's 82%, 82 degrees with 63% humidity. Well, at this time, uh, let's take a short break for some words from our sponsors, and then we will be back um, uh, with hopefully the resumption of this game here on AudioSportsOnline.com. Currently, your Quakers lead the uh, visiting uh, Woodman by a score of 7-6. How prepared are you for retirement? When will you be able to retire? How much will you be able to withdraw each year in retirement? What is the likelihood that you'll outlive your savings and investments? What are the financial issues that could deplete your assets? If you can't confidently answer all of these questions, then you might benefit from getting a written financial plan. Having a written financial plan increases your chances of a good retirement by 60%, according to a recent survey by Forbes magazine. However, they also reported that only 24% of people have a written financial plan. At Gunnell and Kinneman Financial, we will help you plan for your future, and the best time to start is, is today. By coordinating your tax planning with your retirement planning, we can give you the chance you want for a better retirement. Contact us today at 317-203-4433, that's 317-203-4433, or email us at info at gkfin.com, that's info at gkfin.com. Gunnell and Kinneman Financial, Accounting, Tax, and Wealth Managers. Hoosier Tent and Party Rental, 101042 Bradford Road in Avon, that's 101042 Bradford Road in Avon, has been serving Hendricks County for 16 years. They have all your party rental needs. Call them at 317-272-9746. That's 317-272-9746 for your 2018 graduation party needs. Well, back here at Plainfield, we're at a lightning delay here in the first quarter of this freshman game between your Plainfield Quakers and the Greenwood Woodmen. Um, Greenwood, excuse me, Plainfield 
has the uh, the lead by a score of 7-6 with 7.15 to go here in the second quarter. Uh, Scoring recap, um, early in the first quarter, uh, Greenwood, uh, after Plainfield uh, went three and out on their first possession, Greenwood scored on a 19-yard touchdown pass by Luke Hommel to number 13, and the two-point conversion attempt failed, making it 6-0. However, Plainfield struck back on its ensuing drive on a five-yard touchdown rush by Jacob Sheets on a direct snap. And um, Harris Nichols was good on the extra point, bringing us to our current score of 7-6. Well, my hope is that if this game is resumed, and right now we haven't had any lightning since, uh, and I think it's been five minutes now since the uh, lightning delay was first called, um, my hope is that they will just count this current uh, lightning delay as the halftime and just, you know, um, just play the rest of the game straight through there. So, and that way we, w- we wouldn't get out of here too late. And plus, I mean, I, you know, I don't see much point in bringing the kids back for just seven minutes to take another ten-minute break. And, you know, when, when I, this, is, this isn't a direct parallel, but hopefully it's close enough, when I commentated that Decatur Central at Martinsville game back in 2012, when uh, it was resumed late in the second quarter on Saturday, um, it was announced that there would be no halftime um, break, and I, th- I think that that worked best. So, anyway, uh, Plainfield, you know, having a very good season uh, overall. The two losses, they do have two losses, but both are certainly understandable. Like I said, they lost to Avon, the number seven team in Class 6A, and then uh, Ron Colley, nine-time state champion, currently number one team in Class 5A, and then, you know, beat the teams they were supposed to beat. Uh, four-time state champion Tri-West, currently a 3A team, and then um, Mooresville, um, and then finally the the huge win over uh, Greenwood. And you look at their margins. You know, uh, Plainfield they beat Tri West twenty one seven. They beat uh, Mooresville fifty four fourteen, and then Greenwood uh, 63, 27, 60, um, 63-27. And it should be noted that Greenwood actually entered that game four and zero and ranked number six in the state in Class Four A. So Plainfield was was you know I would say a solid favorite, but Greenwood certainly no slouch. And, you know, hard to believe that Greenwood at one point actually, you know, had the ball in the third quarter with a chance to tie it before they gave up, you know, they collapsed and gave up those four touchdowns there in um, three in, in five and a half minutes. You know, a Plainfield scored a touchdown, then uh, had an interception return for a touchdown on the ensuing possession, and then on the ensuing kickoff, uh, recovered when, <laughs> when the Woodman uh, forgot to cover the kickoff, you know, apparently thinking it was a punt, and then uh, the Quakers uh, converted that into a quick touchdown as they recovered in the weds- in, in the red zone. So, anyway, um, let's take a look at what's ahead for the Quakers here in twenty um, in twenty um, seventeen. They've they've still got. Um, Four regular season games left before the playoffs. Uh, This Friday, they return to the road. However, not by much. They will be uh, traveling just eight miles um, from here to play their arch rival, Decatur Central Hawks. Uh, That's always um, a great game. And it's always a very special game, not only because the two teams are in the Mid-State Conference and play each other at least once a year, sometimes twice because they're in the same sectional, but also because... They're only eight miles apart, so they're, you know, um, each other's closest to geographic rival. And then, you know, finally, their programs are very similar magnitude. They're both consistently winning programs that, unfortunately, are notorious for having awful luck in the tournament, which a streak that will hopefully be, um, a streak that will hopefully end this year. (laughs) And, um, you know, and certainly, you know, the football gods owe some favors to both of those programs. And and they they've played some real dandies against each other over the years. You know, um, the first time I ever commentated Plainfield, it was right here at this field in week six of the uh, 2012 season. I actually I you know I'd gone up to Frankfurt the previous night to play to to commentate the Danville game there, and that game uh, was canceled before it started because of lightning and delayed until the next evening. And then uh, Rob Kendall um, asked me if I could you know uh, just do the. Uh, the continuation of the uh, Decatur Central at Plainfield game the next day, which was going to be resumed, you know, I think about midway through the first quarter. 
And it was sometime in the first quarter. I don't remember exactly what point. And, and um, I said, well, you know, I'll be glad to do both games. And he said, well, you know, sure, but you know, I, I don't want to wear you down too much. But no, I, I didn't wear you down too much. I had a great time doing it. It's the only time um, I've done two games a day in both football and basketball on a few occasions. In, you know, in the case of double headers, but that's the only time where I commentated two games in the same day in two different locations. So that, that was that was a great day, and I'd love to do it again sometime. Unfortunately, you know, don't get many opportunities to do that in high school ball. So I was, I was lucky that Plainfield rescheduled in the um, I think early afternoon and um, or maybe late morning. I don't I don't remember which. And then you know. Um, Frankfurt did it at night. So, anyway, uh, for those of you just joining us, uh, we had a lightning delay here at Plainfield with 7.15 to go in the second quarter, and Plainfield on top by a score of 7-6. And um, I have not seen it, but by IHSAA rules, the game has to be suspended until 30 minutes after the last side of lightning. I believe there was only one side of it. And I certainly haven't seen another. And I've been watching out for it. <laughs> and, you know, I, I've been known to sit here during the lightning delays. And every time I, you know, we have a few go a few minutes without it. And then I see another lightning bolt. i like, oh, darn, here we go again. And I'm always nervously hoping that we'll get through it that day, especially if I know that I won't be available to commentate the resumption of the game the next day. Sometimes I can, sometimes I can't. But anyway... Um, now you might hear in the background they're playing the Prince Classic Purple Rain. You know, really, um, I, I, I get a kick out of the way that people change, you know, in perception from one generation to the next. You know, I remember, you know, when I was a kid. I'm 46 now, so, you know, I remember when Prince, you know, became a super, superstar with um, the Purple Rain movie and album back in 1984. And then he was considered to be a major threat to Western morality. And he was highly controversial. And what, what's ironic is that that album, the Purple Rain album, was actually probably his, ly- lyrically his tamest album to date, which except for the infamous Darling Nikki, uh, with which Tipper Gore ended up having a field day. But, yeah, parents were afraid of him. And then... You know, I remember after the Janet Jackson incident at the Super Bowl back in the t- 2003 season, the NFL des- decided that they wanted to do uh, more family-friendly halftime shows. And then I, I got a kick out of who they chose for the next few years for the halftime show. Some of the artists included uh, Paul McCartney, the Rolling Stones, Prince, The Who, artists that, you know, a generation or two earlier parents had been afraid of, you know, who were just considered to be very degenerate, who were leading the uh, youth of America down a path of moral destruction. But then, you know, once the kids of that generation became adults, then, you know, those artists became respectable. And uh, so, um, you know, Ozzy Osbourne's another example. I mean, that I mean, uh, my kids were watching a uh, an, an animated movie a few years ago called Nomeo and Juliet, and I picked out Ozzy as doing one of the voices. And, you know... When I was a kid, there's no way Ozzy would have ever been allowed to voice um, or, or be or, or have any involvement whatsoever in a Disney project. I mean, parents were even more afraid of Ozzy Osbourne than they were of Prince. I mean, when I was 13, Ozzy Osbourne was who you had an album by if you wanted to scare your parents and you know um, make you th- um, make them think that you needed to be exercised. Uh, that's that's very little ex- that's very little exaggeration too, but. Um, Truth be told, though, I mean, uh, Ozzy's lyrics, you know, even from that era, you know, they really weren't that bad. And, you know, some of them are actually positive, like, you know, Crazy Train actually as a very positive message, and that's probably his best-known song. So, you know, I think it was was just his bizarre stage antics back then. And then, you know, we later found out, you know, over the years that Ozzy's, you know, Despite you know his legendary problem with alcohol, he's a he's you know he's a pretty harmless guy. So anyway, uh, I'll tell you you know um the the part of the charm of high school ball you know in doing these broadcasts is that you know sometimes you have to find good uh, material to, to fill space, and so um but 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 I I do enjoy these broadcasts and I, I remember last year. Uh, when we had that lightning delay in the Plainfield at Franklin game, I um 
I thought I was, I'd just talk for five minutes, then go off the air, then come back when they were ready to resume, but, you know. Instead, I actually talked my way through the whole uh, thing. And of course, one thing that makes it easier on Friday nights is that you, uh, I can always go to the WTHR app and read the scores of the other games, and uh, that's not an option here on Monday night. But anyway, let's take a look at what's going on with Plainfield the rest of the regular season. On, um, on the, this Friday, your Quakers return to action um, down at um, at Decatur Central. Um, the Hawks are having an outstanding season. Um, last week, they were. I haven't seen the, the new rankings for this week. They're not up posted here yet on the John Harrell Indiana High School football site. But um, last week, they, they were ranked number seven in the state in Class 5A. They're four and one. Um, they started off with a loss to Franklin Central, a six A team, you know, who's four and one there in week one. But then, uh, since then, the Hawks have been on fire. Uh, they won their subsequent games over Perry, Perry Meridian forty one nine, Whiteland fifty five twenty eight, Martinsville fifty four fifteen, and Mooresville sixty three seven. So, um, you know, the. Um, after after you know two rough possessions to start off the uh, Greenwood game last Friday, uh, Coach Brian Woodard's Plainfield team uh, got on track and they uh, played well and did a fairly good job containing the Woodmen the rest of the, the way and, and made several big plays to stall their drives and um, especially uh, in the second late in the second quarter when the uh, Woodmen turned it over on downs at the Plainfield two, so. Um, Hopefully, uh, Woodard has a few um, tricks up his sleeve to at least slow down. I don't think there's, there's any way to stop the Decatur Central defense, but, you know, hopefully at least slow it down. And, you know, we'll, uh, it, it should be a great game. I hope you all will get out there. I mean, like I said, it's only only seven miles away or, or eight miles away. It's on the southwest side of Indianapolis, so very e- easy to access from here. And then uh, after that, um, th- a week from Friday, the Quakers will be back here at home. I will be bringing you that one. I'm going to be uh, doing. I'm going to be commentating Cascade at Owen Valley this uh, Friday. In fact, I'm going to be all- going back and forth one game to the next between the Quakers and the Cadets the rest of the season in varsity. But this Friday night, or a week from Friday, Plainfield will be back here um, to play the. Um, Whiteland Warriors, a team that the Quakers should beat. Whiteland has had a lot of great teams in recent years. They're having an uncharacteristic, uncharacteristically bad year. In fact, they actually are currently on a streak of 11 consecutive winning seasons. That includes three sectionals, most recently in 2014. This year, however, the Warriors are off to a 1-4 um, a and four start with the only win coming by three po- points over lowly Franklin, who is 0-5. So apparently just a rebuilding uh, project for head coach Darren Fisher, but, you know, I'm sure he will get it back. You know, he's one of the lev- living legends here in Indiana High School football, and sure they'll be back on track soon. But this year, you know, they're right before the picking for the Quakers, so um, hopefully we will get – oh, I'm sorry, I, I, I got I was wrong week there. Franklin. Franklin is our uh, opponent a week from Friday here at Plainfield, which will be uh, – Okay, a week from Friday, that'll be uh, September the 29th. Um, Franklin is really bad this year. They're, uh, they've, they haven't had a winning season since 1996. They do have a, a new head coach this year in Chris Cole, who guided uh, Tri-West to the uh, Class uh, 3A state championship back in 2014. We'll, we'll see if he gets it turned around. Um, but uh, it's, it looks like it's going to take at least a couple of years, so the... Uh, Grizzly Cubs are 0 and 5 this year, so that'll be a week from Friday, and then the week after that we go down to Whiteland. So uh, if you do go to that one, which I hope you do, make sure you take off work early. Um, try try to take off by at least 3:30 so you can beat that awful traffic on 465, um, on I 465, I 65, and US 31, whichever route you take, because they tend to get very uh, congested. You know, if you wait much longer than that, and so you know. It's um so that that should be any um so th- basically that this this uh, Friday at Decatur Central it'll be tough but then a week from Friday at home against Whiteland uh, or against Franklin excuse me should be an easy win 
not quite as uh, certain about the at White uh, at uh, Whiteland game on October the sixth, two weeks from Friday, um, but certainly it looks promising. And then finally, uh, three weeks from Friday on October thirteenth, the Quakers close out the regular season right here at home on Senior Day against the Martinsville Artesians, another very bad team, a team that had a good streak for a long time, but really um, just collapsed. Um, in, the, you know, in the last three years, they ended this game with one and f at one and four with their only win over zero and five Franklin. So uh, the Quakers should w at least win three of their last four. They they will be an underdog, a moderate underdog, probably like about fourteen point level underdog at um, Decatur Central. But they you know, should definitely win two of their last three and probably win the third as well. So and the the two wins that they're virtually guaranteed to win are both at home. The, you know, Franklin and Martinsville. And then after that, we will go to the playoffs. And this is going to be really interesting because, you know, I, I'm not crazy about the new um, um, system that they uh, that started in 2013 here in which um, the enrollment in which enrollment is not no longer the only factor of a team's classification. Uh, for a long time, you know, you were the number of students determined what class you played in. Now it's the number of students as the first, um, as the as the first um, part of the formula. But then uh, now it's also also depends on postseason success, depending on how many levels of this uh, of the tournament that you win, um, you have to move up. You know, and then if if you don't doing uh, it, winning enough levels of the tournament over the next two years, then you know you you move back down. But anyway, Cathedral, after winning the Class 5A state championship in 2013 and 2014, went to Class 6A the last two years, but they didn't win enough sectors of the tournament. And when I say sector, that counts the sec the sectional as one sector and the regional as semi-state and state as, as other sectors, even though the sectional is two or three games, the other sectors are, are only one. But anyway, but it, you get points based on, on the sectors. And uh, uh, Cathedral narrowly missed staying in 6A, so they moved down to 5A. They're currently ranked number five in Class 5A, only two notches above Decatur Central. But anyway, we this our sectional has the same uh, four teams that it did last year, uh, with Cathedral added. So, no, I'm sorry. Excuse me. Um, I, I didn't realize that they. Um, oh wait. Hold on. I'm, I'm I'm sorry. I've got the wrong sectional. Up, I was going to say yeah. So I knew I knew my eyes weren't fooling me. Yeah, they we do have the same port. Um, no, we don't. Okay, we moved with uh, Zionsville. Um, Zionsville uh, has been moved out of the sectional. I did not realize that. So we um, have uh, Arsenal Tech as we did last year. Who we we beat them in the first round um, out at Arsenal Tech game that I brought to you. Um, and then we also have. Um, uh, Decatur Central still in our sectional. I, I'll never forget that classic that JP and I commentated two weeks ago there. Um, um, two two weeks ago, uh, two years ago, in which the uh, Quakers lost a heartbreaker to the uh, Hawks, thirty to twenty-seven. And then uh, we've got Cathedral back in our sectional, and and then we got Ron Colley as well. So. Ron Colley with nine state championships, Cathedral with eleven, and those two teams back in the old in the early Brian Woodard years, those two teams combined to torment us in the playoffs. And um so now the question is, you know, will we, you know, be able to get through one or both of them? And what we have to hope for is for um Ron Colley to um Ron Colley and Cathedral to face each other and one knock the other off and then, you know, we play the game of our lives and knock off that team. So no, it's not, you know, obviously we would be the underdog against either team, but, you know, it, it can be done if we bring our A-plus game and the ball bounces our way a few times. And, you know, I remember three years ago in the regular season when we were super banged up, we lost in week four to uh, Ron Colley right here by a score of 27-3. But then in the uh, sectional championship game when, after we had gotten healthy and uh, sophomore wide receivers, Dante Keys and... Gavin Ritter had, you know, emerged, you know, as strong players late in the season. You know, we were, and then we got Gabe Burkhart uh, back in the second 
second round of the playoffs after he missed the entire season up to that point. And we nearly uh, upset Ron Colley just eight weeks after they beat us 27-3 right, on the, uh, right here at Plainfield. You know, they came back here to Plainfield, and we uh, nearly got them, losing 24-17. to uh, And another one of the best games I've ever commentated. So, um, yeah, I mean, there's still a lot to look forward to. 6.50 now, I believe it's been 25 minutes since the last uh, sight of lightning here. Uh, once we resume play here at uh, Plainfield, your Quakers um, are, are leading 7-6 with 7.15 to go here in the second quarter. And so, you know, um, being in the same sectional again with Cathedral and Ron Colley, you know, it does bring back a, a lot of memories, mostly bad, but, you know, Let's look back at what happened in the early uh, Brian Woodard years. You know, Brian Woodard became the head coach of Plainfield in the 2006 season. That year, um, they lost to. Um, let's look, look at you know the the and the first four years. It should re be remembered that um, uh, Woodard's uh, uh, Plainfield team lost in the sectional championship. It was ca to Cathedral in 06, uh, Westfield in 07, Zionsville in 08, and Cathedral in 09. And then uh, the next three years. Uh, 2010, uh, 2011, and 2012, the um, uh, the Quakers lost to Ron Colley in their first sectional game, and then uh, then again uh, th two years later in 2014, the um, <coughs> the Quakers uh, were eliminated by Ron Colley again this time in the sectional championship. So um, basically, they went through a nine-year stretch in which they lost to either Cathedral or Ron Colley in the tournament. So it would be really sweet to um, finally beat one of those teams in the tournament. We did get a great road win two years ago at Ron Colley that I had the pleasure of commentating. And I, I almost felt bad about it because I love Ron Colley. Uh, I, because Ron Colley has treated me, you know, like, you know, they, they treated me so kindly and uh, they're always rolled out the red carpet for me, you know. I mean, when when I the, you know that was always the, the case when they um, played at Decatur Central or at uh, Plainfield when I was commentating for you know the Hawks and the Quakers. But also the only time I visited Ron Colley, it was that game I just mentioned two years ago. They would check in about once a quarter to ask me if I needed anything, and they they actually you know um, have you know some of the best food service of, of any place I've ever commentated. So, yeah, they really treat you like you're special, and so that's why I always cheer for Ron Colley when they're not playing for a team that I'm commentating. So, um, anyway, now, okay, th th that's a promising sign. The Woodmen are returning to the field here. And we got, uh, and now so are the Quakers, so it looks like we're going to have some football once again here. All right, well, uh, now let's take a... Uh, quick commercial break uh, for some words from our sponsors and then we'll be back with the resumption of this exciting game here on audiosportsonline.com you're listening to plainfield football powered by audiosportsonline.com this broadcast is brought to you by wicker construction Ganell and kinnaman llp jimmy johns kg enterprises and hoosier tent and party rental for more than two decades, Worker Construction has engaged in building one-of-a-kind homes and remodeling projects while exceeding client expectations, delivering projects with professionalism and integrity. Wicker Construction works closely with you, the clients, to understand your lifestyle and construction needs. Jimmy John's offers freaky fast delivery and are last-minute catering specialists. They're located at 2683 East Main next to BW3s and open from 10.30 a.m. to 10 p.m. Sunday through, Sunday through Saturday. More information can be found at 837-8282, that's 837-8282, or at jimmyjohns.com, that's jimmyjohns.com. How prepared are you for retirement? When will you be able to retire? How much will you be able to withdraw each year in retirement? What is the likelihood that you'll outlive your savings and investments? What are the financial issues that could deplete your assets? If you can't confidently answer all of these questions, then you might benefit from getting a written financial plan. Having a written financial plan increases your chances of a good retirement by 60%, according to a recent survey by Forbes magazine. However, they have also reported that only 24% of people have a written financial plan. 
At Gunnell and Kinneman Financial, we will help you plan for your future, and the best time to start is today. By coordinating your tax planning with your retirement planning, we can give the chance you want for a better retirement. Contact, contact us today at 317-203-4433 or email us at info at gkfin.com. That's info at gkfin.com. Gunnell and Kinneman Financial, Accounting, Tax, and Wealth Managers. Hoosier Tent and Party Rental, 101042 Bradford Road in Avon, that's 101042 Bradford Road in Avon, has been serving Hendricks County for 16 years. They have all your party rental needs. Call them at 317-272-9746, that's 317-272-9746, for your 2018 graduation party needs. Well, back here at Plainfield, we're about to finish a lightning delay here um, that uh, caused a break in the action about half an hour ago. Under IHSAA rules, upon the first sight of lightning, uh, the players are required to leave the field until half an hour after the last sight of lightning. Fortunately, apparently, there were no more sightings, so the teams are now back, you know, stretching and getting ready for the resumption of this game, in which your Quakers lead by a score of 7-6 over the Greenwood Woodman. This is the freshman game. These two teams played, the, the, the two varsity teams for these respective schools played Friday night here at Plainfield with the uh, host Quakers winning by a score of 63-27. And um, so I'm unclear, of, and now the team's heading over to the sideline, so apparently we're just, and now the officials are, deliber- are, are having a conference there on the field. We've got maybe 250, 300 fans here tonight at uh, Plainfield. And I'll tell you, I was glad we had some rain today because it was a break from this bad heat. You know, it looks like, you know, we have one last blast of summer heat before autumn weather finally kicks in. Um, right now, your temperature is 80 degrees. Uh, looks like we had a high of 82 to get day. The next uh, eight days, the forecast, according to my iPhone, uh, high temperatures of 83, 88, 89, 88, 89. Then that, that uh, uh, well, let me start over again. So... St- for the next eight days starting tomorrow, the high temperatures projected at 83, 88, 89, 88, 89, 87, 86, and 83, and then finally a week from Wednesday down to a high of 77. So hopefully we can endure the heat these next few days. By the way, the uh, 88 will be the high on Friday. So by the time the uh, game starts at uh, Decatur Central, it should be pretty pleasant maybe down to the low 80s and then like mid to upper 70s by the end of the game. So now back to action here. The Quakers have the ball, second and five at the Greenwood 21. Hand off to Ridgeway. He uh, breaks the tackle, spins around, but he's brought down for, uh, looks like it's going to be a short loss there. Xavier Ridgeway there. 6.53 6. to go and counting here in the second quarter. So now two receivers to the right, one to the left. Ridgeway the running back. Quarterback and shotgun. Aiden Moyers is the quarterback for Plainfield. Turns for some instructions from the sideline now. Gets back into shotgun. Takes the snap. Hands off to Ridgeway. Takes it up the middle. Breaks through uh, uh, up to about the 20 and he does have the first down. So the Quakers trying to build on their one-point lead. Greenwood scored first in the um, first quarter, uh, missed the extra point. Then the Quakers uh, took the lead on the ensuing possession with a touchdown and a successful uh, PAT. So now screen pass over to um, Sheets. Uh, t- takes over to the right side. He's inside the 10, and he cuts over to the r- and uh, moves straight ahead in for the touchdown. So that's a 20 yard 20 yard touchdown pass to Jacob Sheets. He had the rushing touchdown in the first quarter. Now he takes it on a reception here. 20 yards in on a pass from uh, Moyers. So now um Nichols to go for the extra point. I'll tell you Friday it was just so weird to commentate a playing field. This is my 6th season covering the Quakers. It felt weird to cover a kicker not for the Quakers not named Hagee. And now the uh, kick is up and good by Nichols. So your Quakers have a 14-6 lead now. So 
6-11 to go here in the uh, first in the second quarter. Plainfield leading um, by a score of 14-6 following a lightning delay. Nichols now to kick off. We've got number 28, and um, I believe that's... Uh, I believe uh, twenty. Th I believe thirteen and twenty-three. So Nichols on the kick. Field it at the ten, right up to the fifteen, twenty, twenty-five, thirty. He's got a hold. 35, 40, 40, 45, 50, and now he's knocked out just shy of the fifty. So great return by the Woodman. They can tie with a touchdown and a successful two-point conversion. 6.03 to go in the quarter. The Quakers also had an eight-point lead at this point in the varsity game on Friday. It was a one-possession game until the uh, Quakers broke it open with four touchdowns in four and a half minutes in the third quarter. 5.58 to go and counting now. 7.01 your time of day here at Plainfield. Two receivers to the left, eye formation. Gives it to the um, halfback who gets up for a one or two. That's number 28. And in, uh, for those of you who missed my first half commentary, many of the uh, offensive stars um, um, for Greenwood have uh, numbers that are not listed on the roster. So that's why I'm identifying them by number only. Not out of any disrespect <laughs> or any lack of preparation on my part. So one receiver at each side, two running backs. This time we've got, uh, and we got a whistle here. So Greenwood takes a timeout with uh, 5.15 to go. And they, they had um, over 10 seconds on the play clock too, by the way. So it was it apparently was not to avoid a delay of game penalty, but anyway, 5.15 to go here in the second quarter. Plainfield leading Greenwood in freshman football action, 14-6. And I'd also like to, you know, just um, make a mention, you know, um, of uh, one player who's not in action tonight for the uh, freshman Quakers, but is a member of the team, Jay Sveinger. He is a... Um, He's 5'4", 120. He's the younger brother of varsity cornerback Brayton Vyinger, who's the son of my former high school classmate at Madison, Greg Vyinger, who's a starting wide receiver. Greg and I were joking the other night that he was, you know, a wide receiver, and yet, you know, both of his sons turned out to be cornerbacks. <laughs> and the irony of that, I told him, hey, you can use your knowledge of uh, being a wide receiver to help your kids understand the position, and you know. And now, a you know, long pass on the left side, and it is... Um, Broken up, we got a, uh, apparently a pass interference penalty against the Quakers, though there was quite a bit of contact there against number five, the intended receiver. And by the way, I want to emphasize that, um, I, you know, I'm, um, I, I double-checked to make sure that I, I do have the, oh, no, I just saw lightning again in the distance. I'm not sure if the referee saw it or not. Apparently not, because it looks like they're keeping the game going here. Or maybe not. Now I see some officials deliberating. You know, I, uh, I I would never want to put these kids in danger, but part of me is saying, when I saw that lightning, I thought, gee, I hope the referees didn't see that. <laughs> but anyway, though, uh, apparently, and apparently they didn't, so. But it looked like it was pretty far in the distance, so hopefully too far away to hurt anybody here. So now a handoff there, I believe, to 28, who takes up the middle for about five. So uh, five minutes to go and counting here in the third quarter. Uh, playing field on top of Greenwood in freshman football action, 14-6 here on audiosportsonline.com. We had a half-hour lightning delay, which is why we're not as far as we normally would be at, at, in this game. So now um, one receiver at each side. I formation. Hommel and uh, shotgun. And now... Uh, Hand off to 28, and he might have gotten back to the line of scrimmage. 
So that's going to bring up third and five, four, 418 to go and counting here. But any, anyway, um, Jace Weinger is out of this game with a concussion. Um, we wish him a full and speedy recovery. So I see him there on the sideline there wearing his jersey but not his pads. So now screen pass complete over the right side. Dodges a tackler and gets to past the first down, past the 25 to about the 23. So Greenwood, you know, looking very good, showing no rust coming out of that lightning delay. So it'll be first and 10 at the 23 for the Woodman. So now we've got 23 and 13 wide receivers lined up to the left. An eye formation now. Hommel under center. Hands off to the halfback who takes it over to the left. Now dodges uh, um, forward for a gain of about four. That'll bring up about second and five or six. 326 to go and counting. Second quarter. Plainfield on top, 14 6. It's been a pretty fast paced game as freshman games tend to be, usually not a whole lot of passing, especially not long passing. So now we've got uh, one receiver at each side. You've got 23 to the left, five to the right. Number five, that is. Two running backs. This time, uh, Hommel and shotgun. He hands off to uh, 28, who takes a forward. He's going to be very close to the first down. I think they're going to mark him a yard short. It'll be third and short. 2.45 to go. Greenwood does get the ball first to start the second half. Oh, I see there's some more lightning in the far distance. So now a handoff there to the uh, halfback. He might have gotten the first. If he did, it was going to be very close. It could be like a measurement level. I think it's going to be within... Within just a, you know, within a foot or so. 2.14 to go now. And the clock is running. Apparently they, they ruled that it's not close enough for a measurement. But it's going to be fourth and short. 2.04 to go. I guess the woodmen are going to go for it here. You know, they, they just... Oh, I heard the national anthem. I was like, did they play it by mistake? But no, there's a soccer game on the adjacent field over here. So that that threw me off. <laughs> so now the quarterback takes a snap. Um, and screen pass is incomplete over his head, threw it just a little too high. So the Quakers will take over at their own 14 with 140 to go. The Quakers uh, do have all three timeouts left. So yeah, we got the soccer, it looks like the uh, girls' soccer action at the field behind us. I've never commentated soccer. I would like to someday. Uh, the problem is I don't know the terminology very well yet, so I needed to learn that. So three receivers to the right now. Um, pass all uh, deep on the left side, and it is uh, deflected uh, incomplete. A, uh, it was a well-thrown ball, but a Greenwood defender got a hand on it, so it'll be second and 10, 135 to go. Once again, Aiden Moyers is the is the quarterback for your Quakers. One thirty-five to go and counting here at Plainfield. Your Quakers trying to take a two-possession lead here late in the uh, first half. Now a handoff, and uh, he breaks a th uh, a breaks a couple of tacklers, gets up about three or four yards. That was Xavier Ridgeway. You know, he ran um, uh, vertically out to the uh, left side, and the um, defender got a hand on him, but he managed to plow his way forward about three or four yards. So they're marking it third and six, 111 to go and counting now. So now three receivers to the, uh, to the right, one to the left. And now screen pass over there. Uh, it's complete by Sheets. He's got it at the 25, 30. He's got the first down, 35. 40, 
And now he breaks another tackle, and he gets, finally he steps out of bounds, I think, at the 44. Uh, the uh, referee's marking him at the 43. Five, 52.7 seconds to go, and the Quakers have something going here. And keep in mind, they have all three timeouts, so they have the option of working the entire field. So three receivers to the left, one to the right. Moyers. Now uh, screen pass completed, and it's uh, brought past the 50 up to about the 49. That was... uh, And now the uh, Quakers all coming over to the uh, sideline. The Quakers taking a timeout to t- stop the clock's 37.6 seconds to go in the half. They still have two timeouts, two timeouts left. Like I said, the, you know, saving your timeouts is so important because when you're on late drives like this, it gives you the option of working the entire field um, rather than just having to throw to the end zone or throw near the sideline. So the Quakers, you know, have plenty of time now. So the playing field uh, takes the field again. Second and two at the at the Greenwood forty nine. Now we've got um, Jack Beebe lined up to the right. Got Keegan Scheffler and one other receiver to, uh, and now Moyers throws uh, deep up the middle and uh, not. I believe he was going for BB, but uh, it was not close to anybody, and so it'll the clock will stop third and two with 33.7 seconds to go in the half. Plainfield on top, 14-6, going for a two-possession lead. Three receivers to the right, one to the left. One running back. Moyers looks deep, throws up the middle, and it is uh, too high. So two consecutive incompletions there by Moyers. So fourth and two at the at the Greenwood 49. I think the Quakers are going to go for it. They still have the two timeouts. And, if they, of course, if they get the first down here, the clock will stop to move the chain. So three receivers to the right, one to the left. We await the snap. Takes it. Screen pass over to Sheets, but they're right on top of him, and they bring him down. Uh, no, they, they say he didn't even make the catch. So... So three consecutive incompletions by the um, no, they're they're saying he yeah I guess he made it but that they stopped his progress so oh okay I I I know that they they were saying it was incomplete I saw so saw the ball lying there I I didn't realize the referee hadn't spotted it there so now the uh, the woodman take over in decent field position. They have 34, or 34.6 seconds to go and uh, two timeouts to work with. So three receivers to the left, one to the right. Now throw deep downfield. He's got a man open, but it is incomplete. Just too, uh, way too far to the right. Boy, I'll tell you, um, number 23 was uh, decently open, and he made the catch. He had a shot to go all the way. And, you know, again, the, Qua- the Woodman would have tied with the touchdown of the two. So now the Woodman, um, again, three receivers to the left, one to the right, one running back. Luke Hommel, the quarterback in shotgun. Hands off, and he uh, gets up the middle for about three or four yards. They're going to have to use a timeout, 13 seconds and counting. They're, they're still letting the clock run. I figure they would have you know, at least try to take a shot downfield, but it looks like the clock is going to run out. Four, three. And now finally we do have a timeout. But they sure took their sweet, and I do not understand the strategy at all because 
they you know, by the time they, they had two timeouts left and they didn't take they finally uh, let about 10 seconds run off the clock or 12 maybe and called timeout with nine tenths of a second left so I mean you know I don't understand why they didn't use both of them so in, unless there I'm there's some secret strategy that I'm not picking up on that was very poor time management by the uh, uh, by the woodman definitely something to work on in practice. So now, nine-tenths of a second, presumably the la- barring a penalty, the last play of the first half here. Greenwood um, trying to get a touchdown and a two to tie it here. So now, screen pass up the middle, and it is incomplete, and that will take us to the end of the first half, so it looks like they are going to have a halftime. After all, I thought they might not because of... Uh, so we are going to have... Uh, uh, Plainfield is headed... To, I th- a lot of times they don't even go to the locker room. Uh, Plainfield looks like they're going to just all uh, congregate there in one of the end zone, and one, one of the end zones, and then uh, Greenwood there um, on the sideline. Okay, no, the referee's uh, asking for three minutes to be put on the uh, halftime clock. So anyway, at that, I will take a short. Uh, break for some words from our sponsors and then we'll be back with the second half here on audiosportsonline.com your plainfield quakers lead the greenwood woodman 14-6 in freshman football you're listening to plainfield football powered by audiosportsonline.com this broadcast is brought to you by wicker construction Gunnell and kinnaman llp jimmy johns kg enterprises and Hoosier Tent and Party Rental. For more than two decades, Wicker Construction has engaged in building one-of-a-kind homes and remodeling projects, while exceeding client expectations, delivering projects with professionalism and integrity. Wicker Construction works closely with you, the client, to understand your lifestyle and construction needs. Jimmy John's offers freaky fast delivery and our last-minute catering specialists. They are located at 2683, that's 2683 East Main Street next to BW3s, and open from 10.30 a.m. to 10 p.m. Sunday through Saturday. More information can be found at 837-8282, that's 837-8282, or online at jimmyjohns.com. How prepared are you for retirement? When will you be able to retire? How much will you be able to withdraw each year in retirement? What is the likelihood that you'll outlive your savings and investments? What are the financial issues that could deplete your assets? If you can't confidently answer all of these questions, then you might benefit from getting a written financial plan. Having a written financial plan increases your chances of a good retirement by 60%, according to a recent survey by Forbes magazine. However, they also reported that only 24% of people have a written financial plan. At Gunnell & Kinneman Financial, we will help you plan for your future, and the best time to start is today. By coordinating your tax planning with your retirement planning, we can give the chance you want for a better retirement. Contact us today at 317-203-4433, that's 317-203-4433, or email us at info at gkfin.com, that's info at gkfin.com. Ganell and Kinneman Financial Accounting, Ganell and Kinneman Financial, Accounting, Tax, and Wealth Managers. Hoosier Tent and Party Rental, 101042 Bradford Road in Avon, that's 101042 Bradford Road in Avon, has been serving Hendricks County for 16 years. They have all your party rental needs. Call them at 317-272-9746, that's 317-272-9746, for your 2018 graduation party needs. Well, back here at Plainfield, we're near the end of a very abbreviated halftime. We had only a three-minute halftime rather than the usual ten minutes because we previously had a um, 30-minute lightning delay here in the second quarter. Uh, You're listening to freshman football action between your Plainfield Quakers and the Greenwood Woodmen. Plainfield leads the game at this time by a score of 14-6. to 
Greenwood scored in the first quarter on a 19-yard touchdown pass from Luke Hommel to number 13, and the extra point, the two-point conversion attempt failed, making it six nothing. However, um, Plainfield uh, took the lead w- with 2:15 to go in the first quarter on a five-yard touchdown pass from Aiden. Uh, excuse me, a, a five-yard rush by Jacob Sheets and um, Harris Nichols extra point made it 7-6, and then with 6-11 to go in the second quarter, um, Aiden Moyers threw 20 yards to Sheets for a touchdown, and um, Nichols extra point brought us to a current score of 14-6, so now Nichols kicks off. It's a squib kick to start the second half, and it bounces all the way down to the 13, brought up to the 15-20, uh, and to about the 26. So the Greenwood offense will try to get something going, They've struggled since they um, got that touchdown on the opening drive. So the uh, Woodmen start off the second half with an eight-point uh, deficit, just as the varsity team did on Friday night before uh, Plainfield exploded for 28 points in five and a half minutes to put the game away uh, um, on the way to a 63-27 win. So now uh, the Woodmen line up uh, I formation um, with one receiver to each side. The quarterback, and now a uh, handoff to the fullback there who breaks through for about six or seven yards, so a good start to the drive for the Woodman. Eight twenty nine to go in counting. But like I said, you know, um, I, I, I double-checked to make sure these are the freshman rosters because last week I commentated the, um, the Brownsburg at Avon freshman game and I commented I during the first quarter I realized I had the varsity slash JV rosters in front of me so I at the first quarter break I I ran down to you know get the updated rosters and I I, fortunately I was I ran so fast and as we have an incompletion there I ran so fast I only missed one play so (laughs) but man those first few plays back you could really tell I was out of breath I think I'm in pretty good shape for 46, but, you know, you know, uh, running up and, you know, especially running up the steps, you know, that, that'll that get you when you're not, you know, a very well-conditioned athlete. So now 13 and 23 wide receivers line up to the left. I formation. Quarterback is uh, Luke Hommel. He hands uh, off now to a running back who gets up for about two or three. That's number 28 there. So that's going to be a short gain. They're going to be uh, fourth and five, so it looks like the Woodmen will start off with a punt. So now back deep to receive for the Quakers. We've got um, Caleb Weigel. It's 5'10", 150. So now the punt nearly blocked. Weigel calls for a for catch at the 41, and he got it. So your Quakers take over with an eight-point lead, 7.21 to go here in the third quarter. So hopefully what Plainfield will do um, is take several minutes off the clock and get a score, preferably a touchdown, but even a field goal would give them a two-possession lead, a lead which would be very hard for Greenwood to overcome at this stage of the game, especially as the uh, Woodmen have not done much on offense since that very good first possession. Got a lot of wind coming here, so I'm going to have to uh, put, you know, I'm putting my sheets now under the legs of my um, of my tripod here. 7.23, your time of day, just a little bit of daylight left. So three receivers to their right, none to the left, one running back. Moyers in shotgun, takes it, hands off. Uh, and the running back, uh, he runs over to his left side, but runs out of room, and he's brought down for maybe a short loss. That was... That was uh, Durrell Hill there, five nine one forty. They give him credit for minus one there, six fifty eight to go, and counting here in the third quarter. Plainfield trying to take a two possession lead. There, ha- you know, the teams have never been separated by more than one possession today. So now, handoff again to Hill. This time he gets up for about three or four, but it's going to bring up third and long. Six forty one to go and counting. It'd be big for the Woodman if they could you know force a three and out here. Greenwood's defense was absolutely torched 
in the second half, um, really for starting in the second quarter of that um, loss to Plainfield, 63-27 last Friday. Two receivers to the right, one to the left. Hill, the running back, Moyers in shotgun. Takes the snap, gives it to Hill. He's got to hold the middle this time. He's got the first down and more past the 45 up to about the 43. So that's a, a good gain there by Hill. I got about 17 yards. The clock stops to move the chains with 6.06 to go. First and 10 for the Quakers at the 43. Two receivers to each side now. Screen pass completed. Over down the left side, down to the past the 35, and he's out of bounds. It's going to be second and short. That was um, Hunter Herbeck there on the reception. That's H R B E K. I remember uh, the Minnesota Twins had a player, and I believe Kent, I think was his first name, Kent Herbeck. He was a member of the 87 World Series team. Maybe the 91 too, I don't remember. But I know the 87 team. So now, um, hand off there to um, Hill. Breaks through a couple of tackles. We've got a late flag. He's going to be very close to the first down if it counts, which it might not. You know, it's going to, no, it's going to be a, oh, yes, it will. A face mask against the uh, the Woodman, so uh, it will be a first down for the Quakers. But, yeah, again, the name H-R-B-E-K. You know, a lot of those um, Eastern European names, they're notorious for their lack of vowels. Herbeck, I guess, I don't know, maybe Serbian, Croatian, something like that. Bosnian, huh? I'll have to look that up. Yeah, I, I've visited, the only Eastern European country I've ever been to is the Czech Republic. I visited in 2001. It was super cool. The architecture there was awesome. Um, and fortunately, uh, at least there in Prague, the capital, you know, at least in the tourist spots, people spoke pretty good English because I don't speak any Czech at all. But anyway, Hill gets up in the middle for about five yards. Bringing up about third and five, 5.30 to go here. And counting here in the third quarter, playing field. Trying to take the first two possession of the first two possession lead of of the game. We had a thirty minute lightning delay. In the second quarter didn't seem to adversely affect either team. So now one receiver to the left, three to the right. Fix the hand up to Hill. Uh, throws a completion uh, on the left side, and he could take it all the way into the end zone for the touchdown. Yes, he does. That's a um, fourteen yard touchdown pass there from uh, Moyers to Jack Beebe. And there's that two-possession lead I talked about coming with 5.06 to go here in the third quarter. The Quakers have one touchdown in every quarter now. So now Nichols will try to make it three for three. Well, there is a flag there, so... No, so the, the holding against the Quakers, the, the forget it, the, the, uh, will be coming back. So there, the, there wasn't that two-possession lead I talked about, sorry to say. So good break for the Woodman. It'll be second down and nine now. Ball marked on the uh, 16. Now the clock resumes. Five minutes even to go and counting. Moyers throws into the end zone. He's got BB open. Oh, he's just a little, uh, just barely misses it. Um, He just had to, it was slightly catchable, but BB just had to stretch out a little beyond his comfort. So it'll be third and nine now. So two receivers now to the right, BB to the left, Hill the running back. Hill's looked pretty good here in the third quarter. I don't remember him playing in the first half at all. Typically, you see a lot, the coach just try to get a lot, look at a lot of different players here in these freshman and JV games. So now, uh, throws it uh, to, to just to get a rid of it, and he's got a room on the left side inside the five, and he, now we got a late flag here after he's brought down at the two or three. Let's see who was that. That was uh, Seth um, Weiniger, six one one sixty. Okay, it's going to be uh, against the Quakers, so that'll be coming back too. So two hurtful penalties. Uh, well, any pen- any uh, pen- any penalties hurtful, but two particularly hurtful penalties for the Quakers. The first one negating a touchdown. Second one negating a uh, trip down to the two or three yard line. So 
So let's see where it's marked. No, the penalties are waved off. So now the Quakers will have it down at the three. 4.41 to go. The Quakers knocking on the door of that two-possession lead. They got Ridgeway and one of the receiver lined up to the right now. Sheets, the running back. Sheets with two touchdowns tonight. And now, direct snap to Sheets, and he takes it off for the end zone. Does he get it? Yes, touchdown. Jacob Sheets with his third touchdown of the game. He has all three Quaker touchdowns, two rushing, one receiving. And finally, there's that two-possession lead I talked about. Uh, apparently no flags this time. So Jacob Sheets, the MVP of the game so far. He's the guy you, you if you if you play freshman fantasy football, he's the guy you won on your team this week. Nichols goes for um, the extra point. It is good, and he's three for three now. So your Plainfield Quakers now in firm control of this game. Um, just over a quarter and a half to play here at Plainfield. They lead, lead Greenwood 21-6 on audiosportsonline.com. You're listening to Plainfield Football powered by audiosportsonline.com. This broadcast is brought to you by Wicker Construction, Ganell and Kinneman LLP, Jimmy Johns, KG Enterprises, and Hoosier Tent and Party Rental. Well, back here at Plainfield, you're, uh, we're about to resume play with your uh, Quakers on top of the visiting Greenwood Woodman, 21-6 in freshman football action. So now Luke Nichols to kick off. He kicks deep. Is fielded there at about the 10. Brought up to the 15, 20. And he ran into his own man, fell down at the 23. So the Woodman take over an offense with 4.31 to go. And I'm, I'm very thirsty, so I'm going to take a chug of my soda here. When I get a few spare seconds. Woodman down by 15, so they need two touchdowns. Thirteen, um, Number 13 lined up to the right, three receivers to the left. Only one running back this time. Most of the game, the Woodman have lined up with two running backs, often in an eye formation. Hand off there uh, to 23. He takes it up... Uh, for about two or three yards. Stayed on his feet for several seconds, uh, but and wasn't able to push beyond the wall um, of defenders. Four minutes to go and counting in the third quarter. Plainfield leading 21-6. 3.51 to go now on counting. So the uh, Woodman, you know, um, well, using a lot of time, they, they it's only six seconds left on the play clock. They just break huddle, and they call timeout to avoid the delay of game. So just like the uh, that, um, just like that um, extremely poor clock management at the end of the first half, seeing you know, some fundamental problems there on the Woodman now. So anyway, at that, we'll take a quick uh, break for some more from our sponsors here on audiosportsonline.com. For more than two decades, Wicker Construction has engaged in building one-of-a-kind homes and remodeling projects while closely ex while exceeding client expectations, delivering projects with professionalism and integrity. Wicker Construction works closely with you, the clients, to understand your lifestyle and, constru and construction needs. Jimmy John's offers shrieky fast delivery and are last-minute catering specialists. They're located at 2683 East Main Street next to BW3s and open from 10.30 a.m. to 10 p.m. Sunday through Saturday, more information can be found at 8378280 More information can be found at 80 More information can be found at 8378282 that's 8378282 or online at jimmyjohns.com 
Well, back here at Plainfield, we're about to resume action with your Plainfield Quakers leading the Greenwood Woodmen by a score of 21-6 in freshman football action. The Quakers have just uh, broken the game open, taking the first two-possession lead of the game by either team. Greenwood now has the ball second and seven at uh, their own 26 with 3.30 to go here in the third quarter. And let's see. I'm not sure the players are still standing. The ball has not been set yet. I'm not sure what the reason for the delay is. I thought I just saw some lightning in the. I, I know there. It was. I saw at least after we resumed the lightning delay in the uh, third quarter. Um, and the second quarter, excuse me, uh, there were two. So there is another lightning delay. So well, the time of day now is 8.36. That means that uh, we're, um, the gate, we're on delay until at least 8, uh, 8.06. But um, there were at least two occasions after we resumed play in the second quarter in which um, there was... Lightning in the distance, and apparently the officials did not see it. Of course, the thing is, I, I'm from my vantage point. It should be noted that you know there are a lot of uh, trees. Um, uh, uh, there are some very tall trees, you know, where the uh, officials might not have had as good a view of it as I did, you know, because I'm you know elevated, very high off the ground here in the press box. So, anyway. Um, Okay, so the game is over. So your Plainfield Quakers in a lightning-shortened game beat the Greenwood Woodmen by a score of 21-6 to here on audiosportsonline.com. We'll uh, be back after some final words from our sponsors. How prepared are you for retirement? When will you be able to retire? How much will you be able to withdraw each year in retirement? What is the likelihood that you'll outlive your savings and investments? What are the financial issues that could deplete your assets? If you can't confidently answer all of these questions, then you might benefit from getting a written financial plan. Having a written financial plan increases your chances of a good retirement by 60%, according to a recent survey by Forbes magazine. However, they also reported that only 24% of people have a written financial plan. At Gunnell & Kinnaman Financial, we will help you plan for your future, and the best time to start is today. By coordinating your tax plan with your retirement planning, we can give you the chance you want for a better retirement. Contact us today at 317-203-4433 or email us at info at gkfin.com. Gunnell & Kinnaman Financial, Accounting, Tax, and Wealth Managers. Hoosier Tent and Party Rental, 101042 Bradford Road in Avon, that's 101042 Bradford Road in Avon, has been serving Hendricks County for 16 years. They have all your party rental needs. Call them at 317-272-9746, that's 317-272-9746, for your 28 graduation party, for your, two, for your 2018, for your 2018 graduation party needs. Well, Becker at Plainfield for a final time tonight, where your Plainfield Quakers have beaten the Greenwood Woodmen in freshman football in an abbreviated game by a score of 21 6. Uh, it's a game in which we had a 30 minute lightning delay uh, about mi uh, well early in the second quarter. And then with 3.30 to go in the third quarter, we had uh, another side of lightning, and it was initially announced that the game would be delayed for half an hour. However, then if, uh, a minute or so later, it was revealed that the coaches had decided to um, end the game, which probably is for the best because it would have been, you know, we wouldn't have um, been resumed until um, at least 8.06, and of course there's always a chance you're going to have more lightning after that. And, you know, we got in, you know, about two-thirds of a game, and uh, Greenwood, you know, uh, was solid. Uh, Plainfield was solidly in control, and play, you know, you don't want to get out of here by nine, you know, nine thirty, and you know the kids, you know, have that long bus ride home, and they have class tomorrow. So, probably the practical thing to do. So, um, but you know, <laughs> I apologize for my lack of emotion when the game was was called off. But you know, um, it's uh, 
<laughs> I've never commentated a game that ended that way before. So anyway, let's uh, take a look at the, um, uh, the uh, let's have a scoring recap. Um, on their first possession of the game, Greenwood scored um, on a 19-yard touchdown pass from um, Luke Hommel to Jacob, uh, excuse me, from Luke Hommel to number 13, whose name was not on the roster. The uh, two-point conversion attempt failed, um, and Greenwood led 6-0. However, uh, Plainfield struck right, right back on the ensuing possession as Jacob Sheets scored on a five-yard touchdown rush with 2.15 to go in the quarter. Harris Nichols hit the extra point, and giving Plainfield the lead for good, 7-6. Then with um, 6-11 to go in the second quarter, coming off a 30-minute lightning delay, Aiden Moyers passed 20 yards to Jacob Sheets. And Harris uh, uh, Harris Nichols again hit the extra point, making it 14-0. And finally, with 4.36 to go in the third quarter, Sheets struck again, this time on a three-yard rush. And um, Nichols' extra point brought us to our final score of 21-6. Once again, there was a 30-minute lightning delay in the second quarter. And then uh, there were actually two more... Uh, times when I spotted lightning after the during in the second quarter after the resumption when apparently the officials didn't see it and granted I would have had a, a better chance of seeing it from my vantage point than they would have for theirs um, so I don't think that they overlooked it I don't think they were looking the other way I just think that they were not in a very good position to see it it was far in the distance so probably not close enough to be you know of a, a threat but you know it, like the fan in me was glad that you know, that wasn't seen um yeah, you because know, I, I really didn't want to have another uh, d- delay. But, of course, first and foremost, obviously, the kid's safety, you know, is, is what we have to think about and take into consideration. Um, that's far more important than the excitement of us, you know, the fans and, you know. Well, yeah, I'm a commentator, but I'm, I'm a fan first. So, um, anyway, um, it was overall a, a very good performance by the Quakers. Not spectacular, but very good. It was a solid B, maybe B-plus performance. Greenwood, you know, certainly overall had better defense than they did, um, uh, in, in the, the, the varsity team did in their uh, thrashing at the hands of the Quakers on Friday night, 63-27. But Plainfield just seemed to be a little bit better tonight, as they generally have been in the series over the years. You know, Mike Campbell and Brian Woodard, their respective head coaches at Greenwood and Plainfield, Arrived in at their current in their current head coaching jobs there at those schools in 2006. In those years, uh, Plainfield has the edge in the series by a count of um, of of eight to four, and you know so Plainfield has been uh, not a mildly better program over the years, and that was the case tonight. And the lightning delay didn't seem to have much effect on either team, so. Um, I, th- I think Plainfield would have, would have won either way. Uh, the, the Quakers executed, you know, well on both ends of the uh, field, um, as well as on special teams. Um, not a lot of spectacular plays, although they're, you know, Sheets, obviously, the three touchdowns speaks for itself. And then um, also, uh, Derail Hill had, you know, s- some you know, very good moments there in the third quarter as well. So, Certainly, Brian Woodard has shown that he's about as good at developing running backs as any uh, head coach in the state. He always seems to pull a couple out of the blue every year. So, looks like the running back position, you know, now they've got Dawson Anderson Sr. on the varsity team, Tavian Gady, a, a junior. So, it looks like, you know, the running back position for the varsity team is going to be in good shape for quite a few years. So, anyway, uh, once again, your final score here tonight in a, a lightning um Lightning shortened game. Plainfield beats uh, beats Greenwood by a score of 21-6 in freshman football action. The game um, ended by mutual agreement of the coaches after the second lightning delay with 3.30 to go in the third quarter. So I uh, hope you all will get out to Decatur Central on the southwest side of Indianapolis, only eight, mi- eight miles from here on Friday night as your Quakers um, try to move to 4-2 and two on the season against the Hawks, who last week were ranked number 7 in the state in Class 5A. Always uh, an explosive juggernaut of an offensive team. So it sh- should be really exciting, and I'm sure that the Quakers have their hands full, you know, preparing for that one. Playing Decatur Central's big star is Tyrone Tracy, a four year starter running back who's already committed to play for the university, already committed to play for the University of Iowa next year, where he'll be joining another Indianapolis area running back, Toksak and Rabate for, from uh, Brownsburg. And then the uh, Hawks quarterback Bryce Jefferson, uh, as heavily rushing quarterback, uh, 
uncommitted to college, but a very big prospect. He's also a big star for the Hawks, and each of those two guys averages about 10 yards a carry. So undoubtedly the Quakers rushing defense, which has been a very con- very consistently strong over the, throughout the Woodard area, certainly will have its hand full, hands full tonight, but you know, uh, that night. But the Quakers, you know, um, if Slayton and, you know, company have an explosive on- offensive game, and force the Hawks to go to the air a little more than they're used to to doing, then, you know, Plainfield's got a shot to pull that one out. So anyway, that game will come to you live on audiosportsonline.com with another commentator. Uh, Free game starts at 645, and then I will be joining you all back here at Plainfield a week from Friday night as your Quakers um, return home to play the um, Franklin Grizzly Cubs. So thank you so much for joining me, and um, until we meet again, This is Lex Zorn for audiosportsonline.com. Good night, and go Quakers, go.